Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to MST.TV. This is Nishi here bringing you all another Market Watch episode. So, today we are looking at a number of different cards that have bumped up in price over the last week. With some, it's because we're seeing them perform well in online tournaments being hosted over the past month or so. With others, it's because there's potential for the deck to be good in the future, either with new support or with slight shifts in the meta. Let's get started. Alright, so to kick things off, let's start with the one that everyone's kind of freaking out about, and that is Eldritch the Golden Lord. So I know a lot of people, including myself, were expecting the price of Eldritch to settle back down, especially given the fact that there's no events going on at the moment. However, it has done the exact opposite, right? So before it was like 65 to 70, and then we saw it at 80. This card has spiked all the way up in price yesterday uh, to $115 for a single copy. This is absolutely an absurd price point. This reminds me of like Necroz of Brianak, especially since there's not even really any tournaments that people will be able to play it in. At any rate, Eldritch has established itself to be a tier 1 deck this format from what we can see from the results of online tournaments. I think a big part of the reason for this price jump is that people just weren't expecting the deck to perform as well as it has. It's far exceeded everyone's expectations. Also, I believe that in the states, uh, people are just starting to get their $1,200 stimulus checks and of course, people are choosing to spend that money on the investment that they need the most, Yu-Gi-Oh. Honestly, I personally don't think that this is a card that's worth holding onto, especially right now. If the deck continues to do well in online tournaments though, and still does well even after events start back up again, I could honestly see this card hovering around the $80 to $100 price range until the card eventually gets reprinted. So next up, the other big card out of Secret Slayers is Adamancipator Researcher. You know, this is a really interesting set, because I think it's one of the few times that we've seen two extremely relevant archetypes come out in the same side set. The only other one that I can think of before this was like Evil Swarms and Constellers coming out at the same time. Anyways, Ad Emancipators are establishing themselves as one of the most popular decks right now, and a lot of high profile players are looking at it. It has a lot of things going for it, right? It's consistent, it's flexible, and it's a combo deck that can play around Nibiru. And it's also seeing fairly consistent tops in online tournaments. As a result, We've seen researchers jump up to $77 a piece. Like, to be honest, I think this is just as ridiculous of a price point as Eldlich. Although, in my opinion, I like Ad Emancipators a lot more than Eldlich. I personally don't feel like these crazy high prices are going to stick around for too long. I'm hoping that they will settle back down eventually, as more product does make its way out onto the market. But, like, it's hard to say, right? As brand new decks, if they're good, and they show that they're going to continue to be top decks of the meta for the foreseeable future, people might decide to stay really high on them and keep on picking them up, which is going to keep their prices high. So next up, this is a weird one, but we're looking at Nateria Cliff, a card that actually saw a buyout last week, but I think was a pretty bad choice. On the surface, this seems good, right, as a level 4 earth rock monster that you can summon off of the Ad Emancipator tuner effects. Now when this card leaves the field, you can special summon a level 4 Nateria monster from your deck. However, this actually doesn't work very well with the deck. If you synchro or link summon with this card, you do not get the summon effect because it misses the timing to activate. The last thing to happen was the synchro or link summon, not this card being sent to the graveyard. So it just becomes another monster that doesn't provide any value. Now this is probably the result of someone testing this card on dueling book or something where people maybe didn't understand the idea of missing timing and they thought, oh, Naturia Cliff's gonna be a really amazing card, we should go buy that out, but it's actually not that great. Now this didn't stop the card from seeing a pretty bad buyout last week. Secret Rares currently are only $2 each, but they were sitting at $4 to $5 last week, and the DT versions are still sitting at like $15 each. Uh, this card isn't actually gonna be any more meta relevant than it was before, and Naturias are definitely not a deck that's gonna be doing anything anytime soon, so it is definitely a card that you should be trying to move for value while you can. Next up we have another Naturia card, Naturia Barkion. So this one is very similar to the Naturia Beast price spike that we saw last week, seeing play as a synchro monster in Ad Emancipators, as a monster that can put up multiple negates in a turn. Now it's slightly less useful as it can only negate traps and you have to banish cards from your graveyard rather than milling cards so you do have to sort of give up resources for it. However, it can be a very good way to play around cards like Infinite Impermanence or Evenly Matched. Now, unlike Naturia Beast, this card hasn't seen a reprint since its premium gold printing, so it did face a bit bigger of a price spike as the card is harder to find, and even the cheapest copies are somewhat expensive. 
Now the DT versions are $39 a piece, the Ghost Gold Rares are $17, the Secret Rares are $12, the Ultras are $10, and then even the Gold Rares are about $5 each. Now I believe this option isn't as popular as some of the other options for the deck since extra deck space and at Emancipators is quite tight, but it's definitely a pretty solid option for the deck, maybe at least in the side deck or something like that, especially with decks like Altergeist and Subterror running around. With Dual Overload already out, we would have to wait until Battles of Legend later this year for a reprint, so this card might stay expensive for a little while, as long as people think it has the potential to be an important card in the meta. Okay, so one of the decks that is getting a lot of hype right now is Mermail, another one of the decks that we talked about last week. Now, if you want to play budget Mermails, the deck is reasonably cheap since the deck is fairly old, and a lot of different cards have seen reprints. However, Mermails are a deck that have a lot of nice high rarity cards, and a lot of people want to bling it out with cards like Alti Dragoons, Alti Abyss Teus, and Secret Abyss Megalo. Another card that's needed to hollow out the deck is Super Rare Mermail Abyss Gund. This is an effect monster that summons a mermail from your graveyard when it's discarded. Now while the rares are only like a dollar or so, the super rares are a whole $14 each, which is kind of crazy. I believe that in current mermail builds, you do play 3 copies of Abyss Gund because it is an extender that gets its effect if it's discarded either by cost or by card effect. Now this is quite an old hollow, right? Coming out way back in Astral Pack 3, so it is fairly difficult to find. Now historically, this card sits between $3 to $5, and then it jumps up every few months up to around $10 when people start talking about Mermails again, so do expect the price to cool back down to between $3 to $5 over the next several months. So this is one of the more low-key price bumps on the list, but I definitely think that it's one worth paying attention to. Predaplant Chimera Flesia has a graveyard effect, where during the standby phase after it's sent to the graveyard, you can search for a polymerization or fusion spell card directly from your deck. Now it doesn't have to be sent from the field, it can be sent directly from your extra deck. One of the new archetypes coming to the TCG in Rise of the Duelist called Dragma has a couple of cards that allow you to dump monsters from your extra deck to the graveyard. This is cool because dumping this card would give you access to some pretty interesting cards like Shadal Fusion or Super Polymerization. Now this is definitely one of the less talked about bumps because maybe a lot of people think that the archetype isn't going to do anything too relevant. At any rate, Chimeraflesia is most likely going to continue to increase in price over the next several months. It's currently up to around $5 each, whereas it was only a couple of bucks beforehand, and I would expect it to trend upwards to around the $10 mark, assuming it doesn't see a reprint before then. If you're looking to play the Dragma archetype, either as a pure deck or as an engine, I would definitely recommend grabbing your copy of this card now before it jumps up in price. Next, let's take a look at Anti-Magic Arrows. So this is a quick play spell card with a pretty cool effect. You activate it at the start of the battle phase, and then for the rest of the turn after it resolves, spells and traps cannot be activated. Also, cards and effects cannot be activated in response to this card's activation. Now this is an absolutely huge card, especially because it can't really be negated unless your opponent already has an Imperial Order or a Spell Canceller on board. Against decks like Altergeist and Subterrors, this could potentially freeze your opponent's entire back row, allowing you to destroy all of their cards, or set up a board for free. It also introduces some pretty interesting mind games, since a lot of the time if you enter battle phase right off the bat, people might be inclined to think you have a copy of Evenly Matched instead. And it activates at the start of the battle phase, so if your opponent tries to play around it by doing something during your main phase 1, you can stay in main phase 1 to work around it before entering your battle phase to activate this card. Definitely super interesting, and I believe it actually was played by Cody Angeloff who took first place at the Pro Play Games Tour over the weekend. So this card only has one printing from way back in Duelist Pack Battle City, which came out about 5 years ago. While it's a super interesting card, its play did just kinda like come out of nowhere, so I don't know for sure if it's on Konami's radar to be reprinted. Uh, it's actually possible, I think, that it could be included in the Legendary Duelist Season 1 box, because I kinda feel like it falls into the range of like reprint targets, but other than that we'd be waiting until Battles of Legend later this year. The card jumped all the way up to $35 each, 
although there are just a few copies left on TCG Player before they hit $50 a piece. I definitely think that this is an overreaction. I think there just wasn't a lot of quantities available on the market or the quantities that were there were only around like six to $7 each. So it was probably pretty easy to buy out and cause to spike up in price. I'm definitely expecting the price to cool down pretty quickly, probably down to around the 15 to $20 mark within the next couple of days. This next buyout kinda took forever, I was actually surprised that this card was only a few dollars a couple of weeks ago, but Inferno Tempest is now a $15 common card with barely any quantities available on the market. So this card is a very important card in the Necroface Grand Maju deck that Care used to beat Tombox in the live duel from last week, and Necroface Grand Maju has become a much more popular deck since Necroface went to 3 on the most recent ban list. This card was actually only a dollar or two for the longest time, up until a couple of weeks ago, when it very slowly started creeping up in price. Now believe it or not, this card only has one printing that came out back in 2004. That is correct, literally every single copy of this card is like almost 16 years old, which is ridiculous. Like this card is older than every single one of my cousins, it's crazy. Anyways, it makes a lot of sense that there's such few quantities on the market, because with how old this card is, a lot of them are probably damaged or sitting in someone's really old bulk or something like that. So yeah, this is definitely more of a fun, casual kind of deck, though it probably can catch a lot of people off guard at a regionals or something like that. But without events for the next while, I would expect Inferno Tempest to see a reprint in an upcoming OTS pack as either a super rare or a common before events start back up again, so it's certainly a safe option to sell the card now at this somewhat inflated price. Okay, so next, we have another bump up of a smaller card. This time we have Go 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 Gigas, which is being played in the Ad Emancipator deck, alongside cards like Onomatopera, Onomata Pickup, and Dodo Do Dwarf Go 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 Glove. This engine as a whole gives the deck access to rank 4 Xyz monsters, specifically Gallant Granite, which can search for any rock monster in the deck. The engine also consists of earth monsters, so they can be banished to help summon Block Dragon, and they're rocks, so they're considered hits if excavated off of Ad Emancipator effects and can be summoned. I believe that this engine actually makes the deck super consistent since it has a lot of search cards, and it's the preferred engine by a lot of higher level players. I believe that in Cody Angelov's build as well, this is the engine he was using. Now unfortunately, Go 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 Gigas only has one printing from back in Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy, as it wasn't reprinted in the Megatons from that year, and as a result, it has spiked up in price to around the $7-8 to $8 mark. This is another card that I'm definitely expecting to see as an OTS pack common or super rare, so without events, it might be a better idea to dig this card out of your bulk and try to move it while you can. However, I definitely think that if you already have them and you want to play the deck, I think it's pretty safe to just keep a set just in case they don't get reprinted so that you have them readily available for when events do start back up again. So there's one last card I want to squeeze in here, and that is Ra's Disciple. So with the new support announced for the Winged Dragon of Ra, we've seen Ra's Disciple slowly start bumping up in price, with the Secret Rare at around $9 and the Ultras at around 7 now I believe this card was never like a penny stock, they've always been like a dollar or two, but with the new support announced, people who are fans of the original anime and people who might want to collect all of the cards or build the deck for fun are grabbing this card. Now obviously, I don't think that this deck is going to be like a meta strategy or anything like that by any means. I'm also fairly confident that because it has been several years since this card saw its first reprint, we're very likely to see this card reprinted with the new support in the upcoming Legendary Duelist set, although maybe just as a common or a rare. So yeah, nothing to be freaking out about, but instead maybe pull it out of your dollar binder and try to move them for 4 or 5 bucks each if you still can. Alright guys, that is it for today's Market Watch episode. Honestly, I'm like really caught off guard by the prices of Eldritch the Golden Lord and Ad Emancipator Researcher. I honestly thought they would have fallen a lot in price by now, which is why I personally have avoided picking them up quite yet. But I guess they're doing a lot better than what people were expecting. I'm still hoping that once more product gets opened up and maybe some of the product gets brought over from Europe, that we'll be able to see some of the prices tank, but really the market reacts in some really crazy and unexpected ways sometimes, so there's nothing we can do to control that. Anyways guys, that is it from me today. If you did enjoy the video, please slam that thumbs up button for me, and as always, leave a comment down below. 
what you guys think about what's going on in the market or maybe tell me about a card that I didn't cover in today's video so that I can potentially cover it in a future Market Watch episode to keep you all as informed as possible. And of course, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to Tombox and myself for all of the latest Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And uh, yeah, so until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.